Today we are serving summer vibes, even though it is Corona season and we're all bored in the house, bored in the house, bored, bored in the house. That song is always in my head now. <laughs> Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Claudia and most likely you're not new here, you're probably one of my friends. So thank you so much for watching my videos. So I want to change the trajectory of my YouTube channel a little bit just because I think um, I want to start making more informative and educational content. I think I have quite a lot to share throughout my university experiences, uh, my master's experiences. Uh, and I know that when I was a student, recruiting and looking for jobs and finding internships and just trying to manage all of that, it would have been really helpful to watch someone who kind of had the same experience and could guide me throughout that. So let's just get straight into the video. Today I'm going to be presenting to you the pros and cons of uh, living in London as a university student and the pros and cons of uh, London universities in general. Uh, as someone who has studied in London for almost three, four years, yeah, almost four years, I did three years of undergrad and now I'm completing my master's, so almost four years, I do think uh, I have accumulated quite a lot of um, knowledge around this topic. And then at this point, if you are an A-level student, you probably have already made your firm and insurance choices, but perhaps if you're an AS student uh, or if you're still looking, perhaps you can still change your options through clearance or adjustments. I'll be doing six pros and six cons of being a university student in London. Perhaps this could also be uh, helpful for students who are perhaps thinking of coming here for a semester abroad or for a year abroad. Uh, so yeah, if you do think you might want to come to London but are not sure yet, these are the reasons why you should come to London and the reasons why you shouldn't come to London. I'm going to start with the pros, to start on a positive note. And the first one that I have for you guys, and this in my opinion is the most important one. So if you come to London, then come for this reason. Uh, basically, there are better and more abundant job opportunities in the city of London than there are in other places in the UK. This obviously is not a surprise to you guys, but you probably might be thinking even if uh, internships, even if there are not as many job opportunities other, other places, I can still travel to London to do those things, but it is not the same. When I was on my first year of university, I was looking for internships already. I was looking for insight weeks, spring weeks, anything that I could get myself involved in. Second year, obviously, I was looking for summer internships. And obviously, third year, I was starting to look for grad jobs and grad schemes. And if you're in London, I promise you, it is so much easier because you don't have to relocate for interviews. That could really be a setback if you have to travel hours and hours for your interviews and your assessment centers. Uh, it is really easier if you're already in the city of London. Uh, of course, companies are not going to discriminate between regions and locations, but for you, out of convenience perspective, it is better if you're already in London. Also, indirectly, it might affect your applications because being in London has allowed me to network with different people in the city. Of course, all the you know people who are working in the industry are at the moment in London. So networking with those people and getting to know those people has only been available to me because of me living in London and residing in the city. So in terms of jobs and internships and just career prospects in general, being in London is something that's going to be really advantageous let's go on to our first con and this is not a surprise this is the first thing that comes into your mind when you think of London this place is hacking expensive honestly it's expensive <laughs> to say the least it is a freaking expensive I personally come from Portugal and when I moved to London the difference in price and everything was significantly higher and I was generally a little bit taken aback. So first of all, obviously rent is extremely expensive depending on whereabouts in London you live. It can range from about 160 or 150 a week, even though that's extremely cheap, to about 300 a week. I'll generally say groceries are not expensive. Groceries are probably generally similar if you are shopping in a big Tesco's for example you can get really good deals uh, I used to shop at Little all the time which is where you can get the cheapest stuff things that are extremely expensive are rent as I mentioned before travel is so expensive one way to save up on travel is by getting a travel card for the TFL if you're a student you're able to get 30% off on your travel cards which means instead generally in a week you have to pay 33 but if you're a student in a week you can pay 24 I think uh, which is is really you know significantly cheaper other things like going out entertainment uh, socializing these 
things are expensive just going out to eat you're gonna be looking at 15 to 20 pounds um, if you're a cheap steak like me you can find some places for under 10 pounds but generally around 15 to 20 pounds if you do want to get um, to experience the full London university journey then get a part-time job honestly unless you're rich and you don't need to then for all, in all means Alright guys, so the second pro I have for you guys is that London is extremely culturally diverse. Now, this is gonna sound so obvious, but I did not realize how culturally diverse the city was until I moved there. I have always heard that, of course, London is a place of people from all races, all backgrounds, all ethnicities, all nationalities, but I only really knew what it was like when I was there to experience it. The fact that you're able to interact and communicate and really befriend people from all over the world is going to serve as a huge asset for you just, you know, knowledge-wise, mentality-wise, and everything wise is gonna be <laughs> really important so yeah I think it's an experience that you can really only get in London and I don't think there's any other city in the UK that can compare to the cultural diversity of, of London or any other city in the world for that matter my next con is the fact that London is a very crowded city I mean London has a population of almost 10 million that is almost the same population as the whole of Portugal. I mean, Portugal is a whole country, London is a city, and London has almost the same amount of people as Portugal. Think about that. For example, if you want to go to Oxford Circus and shop for some stuff, it is going to be a nightmare. There's too many people, especially on weekends. It is crowded. You're going to have to walk like one step every minute because there's just so many people in front of you. Rush hour. Rush hour? Rush hour is the work of the devil. Let me tell you, nothing is worse than rush hour. Central line, 8 a.m. I mean, <laughs> there's too many people and it's not really something that you can solve or anything that you can avoid. It's something that you just have to live with and get used to and eventually just tolerate. The third pro of being a university student in London is the fact that you can befriend university students from a wide range of universities. I mean, I can list so many London universities at the top of my head. So Queen Mary, LSE, King's, CAS, um, UCL, Imperial, um, Goldsmiths, Brunel, so many. Like, there's so many. How many universities can I name in um, Cambridge? One. How many universities can I name in Oxford? Two, you know, Oxford and Oxford Brooks. How many universities can I name in Leeds or Nottingham? Obviously there are a lot of universities in other places. I probably just don't know them, but I can guarantee you there are more universities in London and there are a lot of reputable universities in London, which means that you can really befriend a lot of people from universities that are similar to yours. I have so many friends who aren't even from Queen Mary, but they're 24-7 with us, with Queen Mary people, and hang out with us 24-7. They're in our campus, they come to our library, and they have had such a full university experience because of that opportunity. If your university is part of the University of London, organization, community, University of London board, which are these universities here, I'll list them down here. Uh, that's even better because you have so many perks that you can leverage from that. For societies wise, um, sports societies or culture societies, they usually do, um, they make, they usually make them intercollegiate for the University of London. So through that, you can also make so many friends. That's how I made most of my friends that are from other universities. Uh, and also there are a lot of accommodation and a lot of um, living halls that are intercollegiate for University of London. So <laughs> you get to meet people that way as well, people who live in the same hall as you. And that is such an invaluable experience that um, I wouldn't take for granted if you are thinking on whether or not to come to London. Well, my third con for being a university student in London is that most likely you will not have a campus. Uh, universities in London are fairly spread out. Uh, that is because of the nature of the city. It is a crowded city. There isn't space to be building a huge campus in one specific area. 
Luckily for me, Queen Mary was a university campus. Um, I don't know many. I think Queen QM is the only one I know. Because you don't get the same living community, you know, familiarity experience as people do outside of London. Now, I know in other universities outside of London, say like Royal Holloway or Warwick, people all live in one campus, right? And people get to know that campus really well. Everyone gets to know each other really well. You go to uh, lectures together, you wake up together, you walk back home, and it's you know that kind of campus experience that everyone kind of dreams of. But in London, you really do not get that, and and yeah, you don't have that whole you know campus familiarity, community feeling, which is something that during freshers is quite quite important, I think. And not getting that can really uh, be a bummer if you decide to come to London. The fourth pro that I have for coming to study in London is the fact that there's so much to do. You really can't get bored while living in London and generally things here are better. If you're talking about restaurants, events, museums, whatever you're interested in, I guarantee you it's going to be better in London. Um, and as a university student, you're going to want to go out and experience. I mean, these are the years where you finally get your freedom, you finally move out of your house, you are living by yourself independently, of course you're going to want to go out out there and explore the world and I mean no better place to do that than in London. The best restaurants are here, museums, I mean there's a National British Museum, there's a National History Museum, there's Tate Modern, I haven't been to any of these, <laughs> I really need to go. There's just a lot to do here and concerts are also popping up all the time and you really can't get bored in the city. Um, you will run out of money but you won't get bored. So my next con is really similar to the previous con I mentioned about London universities not being campus universities um, and that is the fact that if you come to university in London Can you hear my chickens? If you come to university in London, most likely you're gonna have to commute to school and commuting to school is a pain in the ass. You're gonna have to commute to school regardless of where your accommodation is because it's most likely not gonna be near where your lectures are gonna be. Uh, so you're gonna have to be taking the tube to school, which is the worst. Um, so commuting to school is really one of those things that you're gonna have to think about if you wanna come to university in London. So my fifth uh, pro, also very related to what I just said, is the fact that even if you do have to commute to school, it is generally quite easy to find uh, flats here in London. I've never gone through the process outside of London, but I do know that people outside of London need to start looking for accommodation way earlier in the year. I need to have those house, viewing, house viewings and everything done quite ahead of schedule. But in London, if you want to move out, you can really start looking for a flat at say a month maybe in advance and you can still find a decent place. If I want to move out in September, I can really start looking in like August, early August or you know, if I want to be a little bit prepared, a little bit more prepared, I can start looking in July and I'll find a place because most places will ask you to sign um, fairly soon if you like it. So I mean, you can start looking quite late, which is really good. I mean, it really makes the process a lot simpler. You don't have to be worrying about where you're gonna move out to, you know, months in advance. That can really be something that is worrying, especially if you're going through applications and exams and everything. Also, I personally think that you should move out of campus. In London, they kind of kick you out after the first year and you have to find your own place. And I generally really recommend you doing that because then you get to live with your best friends and um, just find a house that fits you guys and rent is a lot cheaper if you move out as well. So the fifth con of being a university student in London is clubbing. Now this is going to differ from person to person, but for me personally, when I was living in Portugal, I had a very different experience. Um, I didn't really go out that much, but when I did go out, um, <laughs> Uh, I would go out in trainers and jeans and it was very comfortable and generally you can really wear whatever you want. Clubbing in London generally uh, requires a very fancy outfit, a very uncomfortable outfit. If I wasn't getting ready with my friends and was getting ready alone, I would hate it. I would absolutely hate it and I'd really rather prefer go clubbing with 
jeans and trainers, which is what people do here and people do in other cities outside of London. And as a university student, clubbing is going to be, you know, a quintessential part of your experience. So it's going to define whether or not you have a good time. And I think London clubbing is just. I mean, to say the least, it is so pretentious. Everyone has to dress up a certain way. If you're dressed in trainers, they won't let you come in. Or if you're dressed in jeans, they won't let you come in. And I've had multiple experiences where I was rejected because there are people of color in the group that I'm with. That is not a lie. I should make a video all about that. But you know, London clubbing can be very pretentious. It is all about uh, the connections you have and what club promoter you know. The only way I ever go clubbing in London is when there's like a university of uh, because those ones are regulated by university societies, so it's okay. But I hate clubbing in London if it's not for those university events. So my last pro for coming to study in London is the fact that London is an extremely heterogeneous, 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 <laughs> hetero. Guys, um, English is not my first language. Heterogeneous. Okay, heterogeneous. So yeah, London is an London is an extremely heterogeneous city, which means that there are so many places that are completely different from each other, all within the same city. Go to the east side; it's trendy, it's rough, uh, it's a little bit more grungy. Um, it's where all the young people are. If you go to the west side of London, it is extremely posh. It is well put together. It is very pretty. It's very scenic. Southeast is a bit rough. Um, if you want to get stabbed, maybe that's the place for you. Being in the same city can be so boring all the time, but in London, you can really experience different flavors of one city. Um, I personally really enjoy the east side of London, so I like hanging out in Shoreditch, Hoxton, um, Hackney, Liverpool Street, etc., Spitzfields Market. And as a university student as well, living in London is going to really help you explore what kind of things you enjoy as well. So I have found uh, my interest through exploring the city and you will find your interest through exploring the city as well. And it's not really something you can do if your city is, you know, very homogeneous. Homogeneous? The last con I have for you guys about being a university student in London is the fact that this city is not the safest place. I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. Um, yeah, it's not the safest place. Of course, it's not like super dangerous either. I'm sure there are cities outside of London that are more dangerous than London. Obviously, you're not actually going to get stabbed, but there are people out there that are quite dangerous. About 99% of the people I know who live in London, which is you know a very big portion of my friend group, um, has has been robbed. I mean, either their phone has gotten stolen, or their wallet has gotten stolen, or their bag has gotten stolen. By robbing, I mean pickpocketing. I don't mean robbing as in people breaking into your house and taking all your goods. That is not what I mean. I personally have had my phone snatched from my hand while I was typing on it in Oxford Circus, Oxford Street, like the busiest street in London. I was typing on my phone and a guy on a motorcycle snatched it away from me and just drove off. So that happened. I also had my wallet stolen from me at a KFC. I got pickpocketed there. Uh, I mean, Chinatown is notorious for you know pickpocketing. You're gonna be, you're gonna have to be really, really careful when you're there because if you're not, I guarantee your phone will get taken away. I have multiple friends who had their phones taken away in Chinatown. If that's something that concerns you, then uh, take it into consideration and I mean, make your decision accordingly. Yeah, those are all my pros and cons for being a university student in London. Take these uh, with a grain of salt and do your own research on whether or not you want to come to study in London. At the end of the day, I really, really recommend it. I personally think it is a wonderful city. I do have a video talking about my overall university experience and how I made the most out of it. So I'll put that video here and I'll also link it in the description box below. I'll also like to talk a little bit more about my overall review of London universities and the fact that they're all very cultural diverse they have a very good faculty usually because you know professors and um, scholars they want to come and live in London and study here and do their research here um, yeah they usually have a very good faculty if you are dabbling with 
coming to London or not coming to London, then hopefully this video has helped you in some way or helped you make your uh, own informed decision. Um, and yeah, let me know if it was useful. I do want to make more content like this where I talk about my university experience and give advice and what to do. I am thinking of doing a video about pros and cons of Queen Mary. So if you do want me to do that, let me know in the description. No, let me know in the comments below. So yeah, thank you very much for watching and um, do give me a like and subscribe because I will be posting more videos and once again, don't forget to recommend what you'd like to see more. Bye-bye!